brethren and sisters, in the year 1997 A.D., when I was a young man, 15 years of age and in my sophomore year in high school, and residing in Kisumu City, Kenya, East Africa, I actually died one night in my sleep and came back to life in the very same night that I had died. Inasmuch as I had died and came back to my body, I did not even know that I had actually died and had an out-of-body experience, OBE, until I shared my experience much later with someone else outside my family who understood what actually happened and was not a stranger to these kinds of real-life stories of people's true and unique encounters with supernature, be it through cult or occult power. It was apparent then, and even much later after I got confirmation from Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself, that I was a victim of serious witchcraft and occult power in my neighborhood, and had it not been for my regular and sincere prayers to him who is our Redeemer, our Lord and Savior, I would have been dead completely and would not have come back to life again. This out-of-body experience, OBE, changed my life forever even unto this day as it was by far. The most pronounced beginnings of my acquisition of the gift of the Holy Spirit of prophecy, casting out of demons, healing, reading of heavenly language, and even writing in the same heavenly language. Psychic reading or prophecy through the Holy Bible amongst others. It was during this first out-of-body experience, OBE, that he, Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself, revealed unto me who Baba Messias Simeo Melchio Ondeto, who is famed and recognized as the founder and spiritual leader of the Legio Maria of Africa Church Mission, truly was, is, and forever shall be. While I saw myself literally floating in midair in the bedroom that I was sleeping in, and my body was laying on the bed at the same time, I was seriously astounded as I had never seen or ever thought of such a thing in real life. In fact, I had never even heard of anything about out-of-body, OBE, experiences or even heard such a phrase in my life or come across such an acronym or abbreviation at all. Brethren and sisters, just as it is written in Hebrews 13-8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. It is also my testimony that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the same forever, and that the miracles and wonders that he has performed for me in my life, he can also perform for all his children who desire in him and his salvation wherever they may be, and in whatever situation or predicament they may find themselves in. Encased in this book is my story. Brethren and sisters, uh, I greet you once again in the sacred name of our Redeemer, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And uh, as I welcome you to the show, and uh, I'm very grateful that you're able to tune in. I know it's a very busy time of the world, right? Especially in the season that we are in, right? Yes, but I am forever grateful that the Lord has allowed you time and even other resources for you to be able, right, yes, to celebrate him through the sharing of testimonies, uh, cementing your faith in him, increasing your capacity, right, yes, in terms of education, learning, and uh, intuitive understanding, right, of the subject matter at hand because one of the things that is missing today, brothers and sisters, even as I uh, testify of in my testimony, is that there are very few people, right, yes, compared to the masses. There are very few people who have a true understanding of the doctrine of Christ. And the reason why I mentioned the word doctrine is because uh, in the last show, I ended up the show by uh, focusing uh, on my attention on what I'm going to discuss today in this show uh, within the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of the you know subject matter of uh, <clears throat> of the entails of this show. And uh, first things first, uh, the Lord made it clear my house shall be called a house of order. Uh, from here in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, United States of America, right? Yes, we welcome you from wherever you are in the world, and I'm forever grateful 
uh, not so long ago, I saw people buying my books in Rome. Right, as I could see, uh, because I monitor all my books are available on all major online books, uh, all major bookstores uh, in the world, uh, especially with those uh, that have an online presence. Uh, I was. Uh, going for a walk not very far from my house over here i met somebody i not met for a long time and uh, it was surprised that all my books now are at the harvard university they've been there for a long time dear sisters i encourage you right here yes, in as much as you are uh, celebrating christ through the sharing of other people's testimonies and marveling at them to also develop a culture of keeping your own journal for which you can also develop your own testimony uh, i begin the show by you know always thanking god the most high and praying for peace to all men of goodwill i am forever grateful that uh, amongst my four i see thousands of them on youtube over there right yes they are those right yes who have made it uh, part of their right yes uh, you know body in life right yes right to ensure that they who are less fortunate than them, right, yes, also have something to smile about, right, yes, in Christ through the many things that they do. And I pray that the Lord allow you the treasures, right, yes, of the world that you need, even the more, right, yes, right, yes, that makes your life a fulfilling, that one which happiness, peace, and joy, right, yes, that you desire, even as he desires for you to have. Right. Uh, before I dive into the meat and potatoes of uh, the subject matter of uh, the show today, let me uh, commence with a word of prayer, please, uh, as uh, demands of protocol. And so we shall pray. Heavenly Father, uh, through your most holy Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, we approach thy throne of glory with fear and uh, trembling. We thank you for the gift of friendship, the gift of fellowship, the gift of life, and the ability to commune together right here through the marvels of modern day technology and also the time that we need right here to sit down with you right here and ponder and meditate on the word of God. Lord, we know that in these trying times that many who would desire to be with us today, right, yes, to do the same thing we are doing, but uh, they do not know how to do so because of the constraints, uh, maybe economic constraints in life. I ask you, Lord, who made it clear that even Sabbath days, right, yes, should be kept holy, to enter into their lives as an individual, right, yes, one by one, and open right yes right those doors that have been closed that they may be able to fulfill the covenants that you have designed for them to fulfill in their life as they unlock maximum potentials right yes not only to enjoy right yes being with you as their lord and savior but also to be a shining light a brilliant uh, beacon right here that welcomes many to you kingdom even as you have designed for us to do so in the great commission of going to the world and spreading the gospel i ask for the presence of your holy spirit to open our eyes to see what you want us to see to open our hearts to hear in our inner man in our inner person right what you want us to hear and to heal us lord so we can become better than who we were before and even become more christ-like like you desire. I ask all these things in the sacred name of our Redeemer, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. And uh, just as I said um, in the last show, uh, I ended it by uh, focusing on what I was going to discuss in this show because we are still in the episode of name, the value of having a good name. And so we started with the value of the name upon which we pray with, right? And uh, Jesus Christ on another end, but also focusing first on housekeeping rules, housekeeping rules, I mean, kingdom rules, right? I said, because Jesus is the head of a kingdom, 
He is a King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Prince of Princes, Mighty Counselor, Eternal Father, Savior of the world. All right. So in his kingdom, right, he made it clear uh, through many of his teachings that uh, if you love me, obey my commandments. Yeah. If you love me, obey my commandments. And he also made it clear uh, that uh, heaven and earth will pass but the commandments of God changeth not. In other words, if he gave you 10 commandments to follow, right, yes, the idea of compromising, maybe if you're comfortable with seven or eight and uh, don't like the other two or struggling with them, right, is not an acceptable method, right, yes, 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 of being, right, yes, yes, uh, comfortable with God in Christ. Uh, in uh, one episode, I made it clear, and sisters, that uh, a kingdom is not a democracy. While democratic ideals can be entertained in a kingdom, even as we saw what was happening between uh, the Israelites and Samuel, this is where I started it from uh, a couple of uh, uh, episodes ago, right? Yes, because I knew that this part I'm going to have to teach it. Right, yes, that's why I read first Samuel chapter 8. I think it had like it has 22 verses, maybe. Right, yes, where it all began, these problems that we are asking, having in Israel today, okay, that are spreading around the world. Uh, I was in a second hour meeting in a church, I was invited, so very far from here, right, and uh, not very far from the Fox Theater in uh, Atlanta. <coughs> it's, uh, downtown over here right on page three it's uh, <clears throat> the second hour in one of the uh, teachings over there there's a lady actually shed tears so when this war something's going on between israel and uh, in the middle east over there right yes um, and it was not tears of crocodile tears, right? The people were sincerely worried, and uh, being a leader in the kingdom of God, right? Yes, uh, these things we feel them very deep. It is my prayer, brothers and sisters, that uh, the Lord purposes uh, for you, right? Yes, to be that which is the strength in times when people are experiencing weaknesses. Right, yes, yes. That by the power of the Holy Spirit gives you power, right, yes, also to not only overcome, but also aid other people to overcome the challenges they're experiencing today. The cost of fuel is very high in many places. Uh, inflation is at a record high. Mm-hmm. And I put on gloves on TV uh, specifically to promote uh, preventive health care during this COVID season. And uh, it is always my prayer that uh, in as much as uh, <clears throat> you're going through your life, maybe now COVID has gone down, but to find it in your heart that uh, personal hygiene can go a long way, even on simple matters like putting on gloves or washing your hands after uh, using a bathroom can go a long way in aiding someone who had a pre-existing condition right yes yes to deal with right yes uh, concept with the concepts that can you know engineer their demise in terms of health mm-hmm. brothers and sisters uh, so kingdom concepts i say kingdom is not a democracy and I said, so what should be my attitude when maybe God gave me 10 commandments and I'm comfortable with eight? Should I say in my own heart that, uh, you know, I should just continue to be a Christian and the Lord will understand on the last day that I was a good Christian and those two other comment, uh, you know, two other Thing, uh, commandments I struggle with, you know, my scale of justice is can somehow balance. Right? Should I be comfortable that way, right? or should I be uh, think this way? That God already gave me, you know, it is strength, right? Yes, to obey eight of His commandments, 
And the reason as to why he brought me into his church is so that I can gain more strength, so that I can perfect myself, right, Jesus, by dealing with these two commandments that are bothering me. What attitude do you think God wants for you? Mm -hmm. right, yes. Brian says, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is known as a perfecter. A perfecter does not go about praising people that much. In my native language, there is a proverb, but I want to focus on one in Swahili because Swahili is spoken mostly in, uh, in our East Central Africa and many other parts, even in the United States or here in Harvard, where my books are being sold over there, they teach Swahili. Right? Um, in Swahili, there is a proverb that goes like this. I'm going to say it in Swahili and then translate it. <clears throat> You know, in the Jewish culture, the first miracle even Jesus did was turn water into wine. So wine has been something that is in many other cultures. I'm going to focus on a problem that deals with something of that nature. In Swahili, it goes like this. Mgema akisifiwa pembo huliti maji. End of quote. Mgema akisifiwa tembo huliti maji. End of quote. What that means that Mgema is a, a wine maker, right? Uh, and uh, Kusifiwa means to praise a wine maker, right? Yes, the whole parable, uh, proverb, when it is translated uh, in one way to say, like, to go like this If you praise uh, the wine maker, right? Yes, uh, then the wine maker is going to compromise the quality of wine next time. He's going to add water. Right? Because, okay, right. Yes. If you continue to praise the winemaker, right, yes, there's a point where you start diluting that wine. <laughs> and, and so the quality of your wine is bound to diminish, right, yes, if, if you praise the wine. So anytime you see Jesus' parables, even uh, his teachings, when, you know, somebody comes to what you know revenge or um, he teaches things like don't focus on looking at the you know <clears throat> log in another person's eye while you're focused on striking you as and these kind of things like this lord created his church brother says i want us to be very keen on this one and in this dispensation of time there's no reason to be shy on on handling doctrinal issues and i before I started uh, the very uh, onset of this, I say I'm going to talk about doctrine. Doctrine means things that are immutable, cannot be changed, things that are the skeleton concept, the skeletal creation, right? Yes, of whatever body it is, right? Yes. If you remove one of those things or distort them, it creates a new creature or introduce a disability effectively attracting a lethargy, right, yes, uh, challenging the longevity or lifespan of that particular creature or uh, organization, okay? The Lord, I, I don't feel like it's hot on this one, right, yes, there's no mincing of ones here, right, yes, if you have a church or a group of other people who think otherwise, in my book, right, yes, I ask the Lord to enable you to also pray by yourself, right, yes. Uh, the Lord taught me how to teach people how to have their own altars and ask the Spirit of the Lord to teach them and also how to figure out what doctrine of Christ they need in their life. If it is being fine and dealing with the fellow man, for example, right, yes, and how to ask the Lord to strengthen you so that you can overcome many things. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. On this one, the Lord brought his church on this world so that it can be a point or a place in which its central purpose is for the perfecting of the saints. The church of Jesus Christ in the world is a place for the perfecting of the saints. So if you are going to go to the church, the first place you are going to find people who are not that much uh, 
obedient to all the Ten Commandments will be the church ain't it? Think about the church of the hospital, maybe treating mental people, yes, 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 mental challenges or whatever kind or STIs, right? Yes, okay. If you want the largest, where there's the largest number of those kind of things, the first place to look is the church. Right? So, in as much as in the last uh, episode, I covered why it is important to identify oneself with the church, right? It is also important to be careful of how you tread within the confines of those churches. For many today, right here, yeah, are in court battles. Many today are in uh, community problems. Many today are struggling with uh, character assassination issues because they did not, right here, yes, take this aspect of being in the church seriously at its very foundation. Sometimes they just did not know. So you walk into the church and you think, oh, everybody, there's no scam over there. There's no the reality, brothers and sisters. In one episode, I read, I took my time, I read Second Peter chapter 2. And Peter over there tells people that in this day and time, there will be false teachers. Okay. In the last episode, I told why the human being cannot change by themselves, why they need the Holy Spirit. There's something I did not cover over there because of the time. You know, when God like, is telling someone to allow the Israelites to have king, that's first Samuel chapter 8, as we read, the Israelites come to someone with an accusation of what is truly happening uh, with these children who he had delegated responsibility to judge Israel. They are uh, the children were basically right, yes, uh, judges that were compromised uh, by the people. Mm -hmm. There's no better way to explain it by, than to just say they were, they were corrupt judges. Okay, right, yes. So then the question, if you have that problem over here today in the church, we see that in the church, right, yes, okay. In my ministry, I'm very strict. They know that, right? Yes, I, I do not believe that. Uh, I, I, I do not believe that I'm going to spend time in my ministry solving administrative problems, right? Yes, uh, if you're not ready for administration or something like that, don't try here. Yeah. You can create yours, right? Yes, mine, I testify how it was given to me by God, okay? My uh, focus is more on, on uh, Jesus' focus on that one which is more delicate to be lost as I organize other people to aid one another to move as an insurance concept. Church is insurance. Right? It deals with people deal with emotions. It helps people to deal with many other challenges in life. Right? Just one of the greatest insurance that Jesus gave us is to love one another. Right, and that's what I focus the most. Right, yes, right, yes. And uh, in so also focusing, there are certain things to note in church that I'd like to <coughs> uh, lead uh, with you as I focus on what I'm going to cover the next uh, episode. If you are going to have a good name, if you are going to identify yourself with Jesus Christ, if you are going to now have a name, you want to develop your own name inside the kingdom of God, then these ones, I testify, will have to have meaning in your life. Right? If you have, if you can internalize them right now, right, it will make perfect sense for you in the future. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 to 3, Jesus said, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye cannot, be entered, ye cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. I want to also read from you from what the Apostle Paul says once he got converted and testifies of the same thing, right? Yes, uh, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. This was until now the Corinthians chapter 2, 
Corinthians chapter 2, verse uh, 11 to 14. And I shall read. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given us, given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. I'd like us to end on this one. Right, yes. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man receiveth not the things of the God, because they are foolishness unto him. Brothers and sisters, there are many who will oppose you when you are in church. They will not understand even what baptism is. But I testify to you. Think about what Jesus taught. Apostle Paul is an apostle who did not even walk with Jesus, but now testifies of them. How much more can you do now that you also have the testimony of Apostle Paul? It is my prayer that the Lord protect you from all evil and harm, aid you to overcome all that he desires for you to overcome, that you may be able to be a shining light a brilliance of success and a victorious Christian in the kingdom of God. Till next time, God bless you. Amen. Amen.